Attention please, 10 minutes to curtain. This is 10 Minutes to Curtain, episode three, and I'm your host, Charlie Miller. Well, you know it's December when a huge tree arrives in the Bonfies lobby. It's Christmas Carol time, and as promised, I have some exciting behind the scenes looks at everyone's favorite holiday show. So let's start with one of the coolest special effects in the production, snow. <laughs> Heather from Highlands Ranch wanted to know how they make it snow on stage and in the audience. So I went up to the catwalks to ask the technicians how it happens. I'm dreaming of a fake white Christmas. I'm Matt Wagner. I am the union uh, deckhand in the stage theater. We are standing in the catwalks of the stage looking at the imitation plastic snow effect, which is one of two effects for the production of Christmas Carol. Uh, basically, it is plastic sheeting that is stretched and pulled apart to resemble snowflakes when it falls. Our drops are just cardboard tubes uh, cut with a access door. It's a simple rig, uh, three barrels, all attached with a line over to an operating point. You pull it, let it rest a second, and then release it, and it magically snows. The other type of snow, which is new as of two years ago, is snow machines called Little Blizzards. And they use kind of a foam bubble type fluid. It is basically uh, suds, uh, soap bubbles, and that is blown over the audience and so uh, the bubbles dissipate and there's no cleanup involved. So these machines here, the little blizzards, they're controlled through the light board. So right now I'm gonna turn on a snow machine. I use this remote here that talks to the light board. First I'll turn on the fan, then I'll turn on the snow machine. Now we travel to Rehearsal Past to take a look at the wig and costume fittings that happen midway through the rehearsal process. Actor David Ivers, best known as the voice behind the cell phone lobby loop, got to test out the makeup, wig, and costume for his character in A Christmas Carol, and I was there for every step of the way. So here it is, a ghostly makeover. Today we are test driving the makeup for Jacob Marley, a character in Christmas Carol being played by David Ivers. Uh, we're also going to try on his wig today, so we're just going to see if we can get all of that uh, coordinated, and there you have it. I got to spend a day here in the wig shop with designer Diana Benkiki, watching fittings, talking about wig design, and learning all about the many wigs used in A Christmas Carol. I've compiled a bunch of that footage into episode three bonus features, so make sure you check it out at youtube.com slash Denver Center. You probably know that the theater company is performing The Miracle Worker right here in the Space Theater. But I bet you didn't know about the cool initiatives that have been launched to help make this show and all of our productions here more accessible to all. Here is Accessibility Coordinator Molly Riddle to talk about the Denver Center's many accessible programs. Theater accessible to all. In conjunction with our production of The Miracle Worker, we've launched a lot of new accessibility services and programs for patrons who may have disabilities. Among them are large print programs for people who may have low vision, uh, need a little bit bigger print to see things, braille programs for patrons who are blind. We also post all of our programs and study guides on our website at denvercenter.org. Anybody who may use a screen reader can have our program read to them before they even come to the theater. In addition to that, starting very soon, we will have all of our programs as audio files that will live on an iPod. Patrons can come to this patron services booth, check out the iPod, go into the theater, sit in their seats, and listen to the program before the production starts. 
All of our theaters are accessible to people who use wheelchairs. Um, we have special seating set aside for them. They just need to call the box office to reserve that. We as always have audio described performances for patrons who are blind or have low vision, which describes all the visual elements taking place on stage during the production. We also have ASL interpretation for patrons who are deaf or hard of hearing. And we also have assistive listening devices for people who may be hard of hearing. Most of these services are new, so we're really trying to get the word out to people. We're hoping that all of our patrons can have a more enjoyable experiences by using these services, even those people who where they weren't necessarily intended for. Now for another installment of my A Piece of the Process series and a look ahead to January's world premiere production of Inanna. I spoke with set designer Vicki Smith about how she translates an idea for a scene into a full-scale set. Here is A Piece of the Process set design. I'm Vicki Smith and I am currently the set designer for Inanna, which takes place in the Ricketson Theater. It is a fairly complicated story about Iraq, but it's a very unusual take on the Iraq War. It's about a museum director and his bride, they're in an arranged marriage, and they are leaving the country of Iraq for good and they're moving to London. The museum director is trying to protect his antiquities as best he can from the war, which is going to start in a few months. It takes place in a hotel room in, in London, and then there are also 11 or 12 memory sequences, which are flashbacks to their life in Iraq. The first thing you do, obviously, is read the script in preparation for an initial meeting, which will be with the director and the other designers on the show. And then I do some research. After the initial uh, meeting, I send the director a sketch and a ground plan and usually some supplementary information and then wait for his comments back. Usually he'll add some things, change some things. And after that, I build a model, which is what you see behind me. This is quarter inch scale, that means that Every quarter inch in this model is equivalent to a foot in real life so that you know exactly the proportions of what you're going to build. And then for the director and the actors, the model is here during rehearsal so they can tell what they're getting and what the space looks like. Then I do working drawings, which are the same kind of things an architect would do, and I do those for the shop here so that the shops can build. I also send a notebook full of props information, which is the various furniture we're going to need, any set decoration, which is pictures on the wall or anything like that, and uh, drawings of anything I think we're going to need to build. After that, I send paint elevations, which is color on everything that we build and what color that's going to be, and I paint those. Um, generally, I come down then for a mid-build trip to see how things are going, talk to the painters, go out with props people, do fabric shopping, look for any furniture that we need to buy. And after that, uh, my final trip is the technical rehearsal when everything gets put together on stage with the actors and the show prepares to go into previews and opening. As usual, I like to end by inviting you to help me with the next episode. The theme of this month's Your Turn is Ask a Playwright. January and February are all about new plays. In fact, next month we'll feature the world premieres of Inanna and Dusty and the Big Bad World. I'll have a chance to interview the playwrights, but I want to know what you want to ask them. So send me your suggestions. As usual, the person with the best idea will win free tickets to the next show. You can post a video, post a comment, or send an email to 10minutes at dcpa.org. And that's it for this month. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube for extended interviews and bonus features. Enjoy the holidays, and I'll see you back here the first Tuesday of next year with a brand new episode of 10 Minutes to Curtain. Stay warm. Come to the theater. <laughs> <laughs>